Hold on, let me get my lighting together. I hope y'all doing good today. <clears throat> um, uh, hold on. I need to get some water because my throat is kind of dry. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Okay. I'm going to wait a little while till people come on. Um. But like I was saying, I hope you all doing good today. We're going to be reading the entire book of Mark today, which is shorter than Matthew by about nine chapters. So should be done in about an hour and a half, an hour and a half. It seems like Saturday, right? Like it really does feel like Saturday, but it's Thursday. We are three days away, Friday, Saturday, well, two. Two days away from Easter, which I'm doing a teaching that God has given me revelation on so much stuff about saved by grace. What is being saved by grace look like? What does it look like? How are we saved by grace? Do we have to work in that grace? It's a really good teaching. But um, I'm about to get started. <clears throat> Share this live with somebody. You know, if you enjoyed last night, um, share this live. I can't wait to make um, a audible, which that's one of my goals, to make an audible on with my voice, reading the entire Bible. But I'm gonna start with the Gospels because that's one book that I started with that helped me to learn a lot about Jesus. Back in 2020, I used to read the Gospels over and over. And I used to listen to the Gospels, actually. That's why I want to do an audible. But I used to listen to the movie that used to be on Netflix, um, where they would literally just say the Gospel verbatim, and it helped so much. Uh, but let's get to praying. I want to pray today because I'm literally just waking up. <laughs> so I'm about to pray, and then I'm about to get right into reading. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for your manifested presence that you um, allow us to enter into each and every day. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you for who you are. Lord Jesus, Elohim. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. God with us, Father God, we thank you for the ultimate sacrifice that you had given us just so that we could experience your love, your prosperity, your grace, and your mercy. Hallelujah. The free offer of salvation is so sweet. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word. Hallelujah. It is as sweet as honey. It is um, healing to our bones, our minds. Hallelujah. And every oppression that we face, we thank you for your freedom. You give us freedom. You give us light. You give us, give us life. And we thank you for all of it. Hallelujah. We just want to magnify you today, this morning. Hallelujah. I glorify your, your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for everybody who watches this live. Hallelujah. Thank you for allowing me to even listen in on your word. And just it just feels so good to read your word. It's literally healing to the mind, healing to the body. 
You give us so much parables, but you also give us the revelation of your parables throughout your readings and teachings. Hallelujah. Thank you for the understanding and wisdom and knowledge that you have given us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let this reading be all of you and none of me. Hallelujah. I shall decrease as you increase. Hallelujah. Fill us up, Lord Jesus. Fill everybody up that touches this live, that sees this live, that read the word while I'm reading it, that listen to the word while I'm reading it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for your manifested presence, Lord. Thank you for your manifested presence. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. We, um, give you access i give you access to be here hallelujah you are welcome you're welcome you're welcome fill me up father god fill me up with your holy spirit let me overflow hallelujah let me overflow lord jesus hallelujah fill up my cup hallelujah thank you jesus for your protection hallelujah thank you jesus for your motivation and inspiration that you give me daily to be in your word to share your word to walk bold hallelujah Thank you for your boldness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ask you for the faith to forgive. I ask you for the faith to finish. I ask you for the faith to complete the things of the Lord. Hallelujah. Neo Sali Kariata. Hallelujah. Thank you for your beautiful language. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. As we enter into your rest. Hallelujah. As we enter into your rest, fill us up with mysteries, with things of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Glory to the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords. Hallelujah. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. We magnify your name. This is about you. Hallelujah. This life is about you. Hallelujah. My life is about you. Hallelujah. Everything is for your glory. Hallelujah. For your namesake. For your namesake. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are so powerful. Thank you for being here. Hallelujah. Taking time out of your day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my gosh. Hallelujah. Thank you for filling me up. Hallelujah. Thank you for taking away the pain. Thank you for being my strength. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Thank you for leading me. Thank you for guiding your people. Hallelujah. And setting the captives free. Hallelujah. For there's no other time greater than this. Mm. God is so good. God is so good, and it's so awesome to be able to enter into his presence and feel his manifestation. His manifested presence is a difference than just knowing God is everywhere and entering into his rest. And if you come into this life, you have come into Jesus' rest. Hallelujah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, he just brings me so much joy. My stomach was uncomfortable before I went into prayer, and he just took that pain away. Hallelujah. So that I could read the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's why That's why I love Jesus. Let me get started. <sighs> okay, Mark. Mark, 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 Mark. <clears throat> Chapter 1. John the Baptist prepares the way for Jesus. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, is written in Isaiah. In Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching about uh, preaching and baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with leather belt around his waist. And he, um, he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, the baptism of Jesus. I'll make sure this is right. Okay. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. 
just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw he saw a heaven being torn open. And the spirit descended on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. Satan tempts Jesus in the wilderness. At once the spirit sent him onto, I mean, out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. Message and ministry of Jesus, the servant. Jesus ministry in Galilee. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Four fishermen followed Jesus. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their net. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Jesus teaches with authority. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught. He taught them with he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. The Holy One of God. Hallelujah. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all amazed that they, the people were all so amazed that they asked each other, who is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law and many others. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her and, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon possessed. The whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Jesus preaches throughout Galilee. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Jesus heals the man with leprosy. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show off yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifice, the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your clean, cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. Hallelujah. Jesus heals a paralyzed man. Chapter 2. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. 
They gathered in such large numbers and there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get to him or get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mats the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven or to say, get up, take your mat and walk. But I know to I but I want you to know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat and walked in the, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone and they praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. Jesus eats with sinners at Matthew house. Once again, Jesus went outside out beside the lake a large crowd came to him and he began to teach them as he walked along he saw levi son of alphaeus sitting at the tax collector's booth follow me jesus told him and levi got up and followed him while jesus was having dinner at levi's house many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples for there were many who followed him when the teachers of the law who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors. They asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Religious leaders asked Jesus about fasting. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, how is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom, <coughs> excuse me, how can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot, so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and on that day they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth um, on an old garment. Otherwise, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the wine will burst in the skins. And both of the wine and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins. The disciples pick wheat on the Sabbath. When the Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and his disciples walked along. They began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to them, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In that days of Abathar, the high priest, he entered in the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is unlawful only for priests to eat, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath were made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath. Chapter three, Jesus heals a man's hands on the Sabbath. Another time, Jesus went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely, so if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save a life or to kill? But they remained silent. He looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, said to 
the man stretch out your hand. He stretched out his hand and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians, Herodians how they might kill Jesus. Large crowds followed Jesus. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake and a large crowd from Galilee followed. When they heard about all he was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, Edomia, and in the regions across the Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. Because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him to keep the people from crowding him. For he had healed many so that those with diseases were pushing forward to touch him. Whenever the impure spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. But he gave them strict orders not to tell others about him. Jesus chooses the twelve disciples. Jesus went up on the mountainside and called him those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. These are the twelve he appointed. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter. James, son of Zebedee, his brother John. To them he gave the name Bonnergers, which means son of thunder. Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphasis. Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Religious leaders accused Jesus of getting his power from Satan. Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is a possessed by Bezalbu, by the prince of demons. He is driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, the house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first trying to tie him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. Hallelujah. He said this because they were saying he was an impure spirit. Jesus describes his true family. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived, standing outside. They sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers, he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Chapter 4. Jesus tells the parable of the four, the four soils. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake. While all the people were along the shore at the water's edge, he taught them many things by parables and in his teaching said, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came out, the plant was scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30 and 60, and some 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Jesus explains the parable of the four soils. 
when he was alone the 12 the 12 and the others around him asked him about the parables he told them the secrets of the kingdom of god has been given to you but to those on the outside everything is said in parables so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving and ever hearing but never understanding otherwise they might turn to be forgiven then jesus said to them don't you understand this parable how then will you understand any parable the former sows the word some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown as soon as they hear it satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them others like seed sown on rocky places hear the word and at once receive it with joy but since they have no root they last only a short time when trouble or persecution comes because of the word they quickly fall away still others like seed sown among thorns hear the word but the worries of the life of this life the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires of other things come in and choke the word making it unfruitful others like seed sown on good soil hear the word accept it and produce a crop some 30 some 60 some 100 times what was sown he said to them do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed instead don't you put it on its stand for whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought up into the open if anyone has ears to hear let them hear consider carefully what you hear he continued with the measure you use it will be measured to you and even more whoever has will whoever has will be forgiven more whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them. Jesus tells the parable of the growing seed. He also said this. This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters a seed on the ground night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows. Though he does not know how, all by itself the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel of, its, of the head or in the head as soon as the grain is ripe he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come jesus tells the parable of the mustard seed again he said what shall we say the kingdom of god is like or what parable shall we use to describe it it is like a mustard seed which is the smallest of all seeds on earth yet when planted it grows and becomes the largest of all the garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. Jesus calms the storm. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. They took him along, just as he was, in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in, was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Jesus sends demons into a herd of pigs. Chapter five. They went across the lake to the region of Gernesis. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs and met him or to meet him this man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore not even with a chain for he had often been chained hand and foot but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet no one was strong enough to subdue him night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry and cut himself with stones when he saw jesus from a distance he ran and fell to his knees in front of him. He shouted, he shouted at the top of his voice, 
What do you want with me, Jesus, son of most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is, Re is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, follow us to go into them. I mean, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down to, to steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw that the man who has been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been um, demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, go home to your own people to tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell, him, and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. Jesus heals a bleeding woman and restores a girl to life. When Jesus had again crossed over by the boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please. Come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and lived. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus... She became up behind she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought if I just touch his cloak I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out of him, he turned around in the crowd and asked, "Who touched my clothes?" You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, "Who touched me?" But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what, what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, um, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they had come home from of the synagogue, when they had come to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but sleep. But they laughed at him were with him and went and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Taliatha, come, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. And this day were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this. And told them to give her something to eat. Chapter 6. The people of Nazareth refused to believe. Jesus left and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were amazed. 
Where did this man get these things? They asked. What's this wisdom that has been given to him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed of their lack of faith. Jesus sends out the 12 disciples. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village, calling the 12 to him. He began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in, the, in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Herod kills John the Baptist. King Herod heard about this, for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and that is why miraculous, um, why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said he is Elijah, and still others claim he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has raised from the dead? For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he and him bound and put into prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to because Herod feared John and protected him knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Harry heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the opportune time came. On his birthday, Harry gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. The king said to the girl, ask me for anything you want and I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath. Whatever you ask, I will give. I will give you up to half of my kingdom. Hallelujah. She went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once the girl hurried in to the king with the request. I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed, but because of his oats and his dinner guests, he did not want to refuse her. So immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in prison, and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl. And she gave it to her mother. On hearing of this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Jesus feed 5,000. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat. He said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place, but many who saw them leave and recognized them and ran on foot from all of the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said. It is already very late. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, you give them something to eat. 
They said to him, that would take more than half a year's wages. Are we to go to spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have? He asked. Go and see. When they found it out, they said five and two fish. Then Jesus directed them to have all of the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in the groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 baskets full of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of men who had eaten the 5,000. Jesus walks on water. Hallelujah. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida. While he dismissed the crowd after leaving them, he went up, he went up on a mountainside to pray. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass them, but when he saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately, he spoke to them and said, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely amazed, for they had not understood with the loaves their hearts were hardened. Jesus heals all who touch him. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gensuret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout the whole region and carried the sick on mats to whoever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages, towns, or countrysides, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. Hallelujah. Chapter 7. Jesus teaches about inner purity. Jesus teaches about inner purity. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled, that is unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they came from the marketplace, <clears throat> when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observe many traditions such as washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and the teacher of the law asked Jesus, Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders? Instead of eating their food with defiled hands, he replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to the human traditions. And he continued, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, honor your father and mother. And anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you said that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is carbon that is devoted to God. When you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother, thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down and you do many things like that. And Jesus called the crowd to him and said, listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. And when he left the crowd entered, and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull, he asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach and then out of the body. 
In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. He went on, what comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. Jesus minister, mi Jesus ministry beyond Galilee. Jesus sends a demon out of a girl. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it. Yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek born in um, Syria, Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive out the demon of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her children lying on the bed and the demon gone. Jesus heals many people. Hallelujah. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of Decapolis. There some people bought, brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside, um, after he took him aside away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Aphathatha, which means be open. At this, the man's ears were open. His tongue was loose. Okay, my phone. I need to charge my phone up. I'm going to stop. I'm going to charge it up um, after chapter 10. Okay. At this, the man's ears were open. His tongue was loose, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them to tell um, commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed and amazement with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Jesus feeds the 4,000. During those days, another large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way because some of them have come a long distance. His disciples answered, But well, where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to feed them? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. And when he had taken seven loaves... <laughs> <laughs> okay i'll be out there i'm reading okay boo boo that's my son okay um he told he told the crowd sit down on the ground when he had taken the seven loaves and given thanks he broke them and gave them to his disciples and distribute to the people and they did so they had a few small sh um, fish as well he gave thanks to them also told the disciples to distribute them the people ate and were satisfied. Afterward, the disciples picked up the seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. About 4,000 were present. After he had sent them away, he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the region of Dalamutha. Leaders began demand a miraculous sign. The Pharisees came and began to question Jesus to test him. They asked him for a sign from heaven. He sighed deeply and said, Why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to it. Then he left them. Go back into the boat and cross to the other side. Jesus warns against wrong teaching. 
His disciples had forgotten to bring bread except for one loaf they had with them in the boat. Be careful, Jesus warned them. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. They discussed with his with one and said, it is because we have no bread. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked them, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember when I broke the five loaves and the 5,000, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? Twelve, they said. And when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? They answered, seven. He said to them, do you still not understand? Jesus restored sight to the blind. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eye and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on on the man's eyes then his eyes were open his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly jesus sent him home saying don't even go into the village peter says jesus is the messiah jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around car um car Sera, philippi on the way he asked them why do people say who do people say i am they replied some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. What do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. Jesus predicts his death the first time. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and, begin re and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. And that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this and Peter looked and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have the mind that concerns that um, the mind, the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the, the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, in this adulterous and sin sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Chapter 9. And he said to them, Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Before they see the kingdom of God has come with power. Jesus is transfigured on the mountain. Jesus is transfigured on the mountain. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, John with him and led them up a high mountain while they were all alone. They was transfigured before, him, before them. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whither than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, is it good for us to be here? Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so afraid. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son who I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from death. They kept the matter to themselves, discussing what rising from the dead meant. 
And they asked him, why do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, to be sure Elijah does come first and restores all things. Why then it is written that the son of man must suffer much and be rejected. But I tell you, Elijah has come and they have done to him everything they wished, just as it is written about him. Jesus heals a demon possessed boy. When they came to the other to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and saw teachers of the law are arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked a man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has been that has robbed him of speech. Whenever he seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and become rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. And when the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into convulsion. He fell to the ground and rode around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has it, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered, it has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, Jesus said, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit, you deaf and mute spirit. He said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many had said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind come out only by prayer and fasting. Jesus predicts his death the second time. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him. And after three days, he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. The disciples argue about who would be the greatest. They came to Capernaum when he um, when he was in the house. He asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest sitting down jesus called the 12 and said anyone who wants to be first must be last and the servant of all he took the little, little children whom he placed among them taking the child in his arms said to them whoever welcomes one of the little children in my name welcomes me and whoever welcomes me does not welcome me but the one who sent me the disciples forbid another to use jesus name Teacher said, John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name and we told him to stop because he is not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say a bad, say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Truly, I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. Jesus warns against temptation. If anyone causes one of the little ones, those who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them if a large milestone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life main than with two hands to go into hell where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell 
where the worms that eat them do not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt among yourself and be at peace with each other. Amen. Okay, I'm about to get my charger real quick. Just a second, y'all. Okay. Okay, we on chapter 10. All right, I think that's good. Okay. Chapter 10. <clears throat> Jesus teaches about marriage and divorce. Jesus then left the place and went into the region of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds of people came to him and as was he, and, and as was his custom, he taught them. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? What did Moses command you? He replied. They said Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because of your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law. Jesus replied, but at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this, is, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. And the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. Jesus blesses the children. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such of these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them and blessed them. Jesus speaks to the rich young man. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since a young boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have to give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard is it for, a rich, for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter spoke up, We have left everything to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, No one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mothers or father or children or feels for me 
and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in the present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields along with persecution, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Jesus predicts his death the third time. <clears throat> they were on the way up to the Jerusalem, with Jesus leading the way, and the disciples were astonished, while those who followed were afraid. Again, he took twelve aside and told them what was going to happen to him. We are going up to Jerusalem, he said. The Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him and spit on him, flog him, and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. Hallelujah. Jesus teaches about serving others. Then James and John, the son of Zebedee, came to him, teacher. They said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave to all or of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus heals a blind beggar. Then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting on the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Chapter 11, Jesus' ministry in Jerusalem. Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and find a coat outside of the street, tied it on the doorway. As they untie it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing? Untying the coat. They answered as Jesus told them. So the people let them go. I mean, and the people let them go. When they brought the coat to Jesus, they threw their cloaks over it. He said on it, many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in, in the fields. Those went ahead, and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with his twelve. 
Jesus clears the temple again. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in a distance a fig tree in, le in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because he was not it was not um season for figs then he said to the tree may no one ever eat fruit from you again and his disciples heard him say it on um, reaching jerusalem jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there he overturned the tables of the money chargers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, It is written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him. For they feared him, because the whole crowd were amazed at his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. Jesus says the disciples can pray for anything. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself in the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And when you stand in and when you stand in praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your father in heaven may forgive your sins. Religious leaders challenge Jesus authority. They arrived again in Jerusalem. And while Jesus was walking in, in the temple courts, the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders came to him. By what authority are you doing these things? They asked. And who gave you authority to do this? Jesus replied, I will ask you one question. Answer me. And I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John baptism. Was it from heaven or of human origin? Tell me. They discussed it among themselves and said, if we say from heaven, he will ask then they um he will ask then they why did i mean then why didn't you believe him but if we say of human origin they feared the people for everyone held that john really was a prophet so they answered jesus we don't know jesus said neither will i tell you by what authority i'm doing these things chapter 12 jesus tells the parable of the evil farmers Jesus then began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a pit for the wine press, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. At harvest time, he sent a servant to tenants to collect from them, from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. But they seized him, beat him, and sent him away empty-handed. Then he sent another, still another, and the one they killed, and that one they killed. He sent many others. Some, some of them they beat, others they killed. He had left to send a son whom he loved. He sent him last of all, saying, they will respect my son. But the tenants said to one another, this is the heir. Come. Let's kill him. The inheritance will be ours. So they took him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyards to others. Haven't you read this passage in scripture? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. Then the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders looked for a way to arrest him because they knew he had spoken the parable against them. But they were afraid of the crowd, so they left him and went away. Religious leaders questioned Jesus about paying taxes. Later, they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus to catch him. In his words, they came to him and said, Teacher, we know that you are a man of integrity. 
You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are, but you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Now, is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesars or not? Should we pay or shouldn't we? But Jesus knew their hip, uh, um, hypocrisy. Why are you trying to trap me? He asked. Bring me the denarius and let me look at it. They brought the coin and he asked them, whose image is this? Who um, And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then Jesus said to them, give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and give what is uh, and give to God what is God. And they were amazed at him. Religious leaders questioned Jesus about resurrection. Then the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses wrote for us that if a man brother dies and leaves a wife but no children, the man must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first one married and died without leaving any children. The second one married the widow, but he also died, leaving no children. It was the same for the third. In fact, none of the seven left any children. Last of all, the woman died too. At resurrection, whose wife will she be? Since the seven were married to her, Jesus replied, Are you not in error? Because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. When the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like angels in heaven. Now about the dead rising, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the account of the burning bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are badly mistaken. Religious leaders questioned Jesus about the greatest commandment. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked them, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the, loud, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. This is no commandment. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher. The man replied, you are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then, no one dared ask him any more questions. Hallelujah. Religious leaders cannot answer Jesus' question. While Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he asked, Why do the teachers of the law say that the Messiah is the son of David? David himself, speaking by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself called him Lord. How then can he be his son? The large crowd listened to him with delight. Jesus warns against the religious leaders. As he taught, Jesus said, watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at the banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. The poor widow gives all she has. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many people... Many rich people threw in large amounts, but the poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty put in everything all she had to live on. Chapter 13, 
Jesus tells about the future. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of the disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stone, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings? Jesus replied, Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Everyone, everyone will be thrown down. Hallelujah. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming I am he and will, be de and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. You must be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On the account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations whenever you are arrested and brought to trial. Do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given to you at the time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death and father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. Everyone will hate you because of me. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you see the abomination that causes desolation standing where it is, where it does not belong, let the leader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the house stop go down or enter the house to take anything out. Let no one in the field go back to their to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in the days for the pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that this will not take place in winter, because those who will be because those will be the days of distress unequaled from the beginning. When God created the world until now and never to be equaled again. If the Lord had not cut, sh cut short those days, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, whom he has chosen, he has shortened them. And that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or look, there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elite. Elect. So be on your guard. I have told you everything ahead of time. Jesus tells about his return. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angel and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as the twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that it is that the summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near right at the door. Truly, I tell you. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Jesus tells about remaining watchful. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or the midnight, or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he quickly, if he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. 
Chapter 14. Religious leaders plot to kill Jesus. Now, the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or the people may riot. A woman, a woman anoints Jesus with perfume. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar, a very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money um, and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you and you can help them anytime you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body before beforehand to prepare me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Judas agrees to betray Jesus. Then Judas is correct. One of the twelve went to the chief priest to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Disciples prepare for the Passover. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of the disciples telling them, Go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. Hallelujah. The disciples left, went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared, they prepared the Passover. Jesus and disciples shared the Last Supper. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who drips bread into the bowl with me, who dips bread into the bowl with me. The son of man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the son of man. It would be better for him if he would, if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to them, truly, I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink in the new, it new in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus again predicts um, Peter's denial. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, even if I fall away, I will not. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered today. Yes, tonight before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted empathetically, even if I have to die with you. I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. Jesus agonizes in the garden. They went to the place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to the disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, John along with him and began to deeply dis be distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He said to them, 
stay here and keep watch. Going a little far farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more, he went away and prayed the same thing. When he became back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Enough, the hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Jesus betrayed and arrested. Just as he was speaking, Judas on the twelfth appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The man seized Jesus and arrested him. The one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you teaching in the temple courts and you did not arrest me, but the scripture must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but linen garment was following Jesus when they seized him. He fled naked, leaving his garment behind. Cypheus questions Jesus. They, they took Jesus to the high priest. And all the chief priests, the elders, and the teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they can put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then son stood up and gave um, this false testimony against him. When he heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands in the three days will build another not made with hands. Yet even yet even then their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that they that these means are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? I am, said Jesus. And you will see the son of man sitting on the right hand of the mighty one and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witness? He asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists and said, prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. Peter denies knowing Jesus. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warning, warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with the Nazarene Jesus, she said, but he denied it. I don't know or understand what you are talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, this fellow is one of them. Again, he denied. After a little while, those standing near, near said to Peter, surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses and he swore to them. I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crow the second time, then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Chapter 15. The council of religious leaders condemns Jesus. Very early in the morning, 
the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Saharanin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handled him over and handed him over to Pilate. Jesus then trials before Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply and Pilate was amazed. Pilate hands Jesus over to be crucified. Now it was custom at the festival to release a prisoner, prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the in um in secretiveness who had committed murder in the uprising the crowd came up and asked pilate to do for them what he what he usually did do you want me to release to you the king of jews asked pilate knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priest had handed jesus over to him but the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Bar Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted louder. Crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Roman soldiers mocked Jesus. The soldiers led Jesus away into a place and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews. Again and again, they struck him on the head with the staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they, be they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Jesus is led away to be crucified. A certain man of Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country. And they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Gal. Um, Golgotha, which means the place of skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with mirror, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. Jesus is placed on the cross. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. It is written, Notice of the charge against him read, The king of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults to him, at him, shaking their heads, saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, he said, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heap insults on him. Jesus dies on the cross. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Elo, Elo, Lemme Sabbatana. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Some ran, filled his sponge with vinegar, with wine vinegar, put it on the staff, and offered it to Jesus for Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. He said with a loud cry, Jesus breathed, breathed, breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the son of God. Some women from were watching from a distance. Um, among them were Mary Magdalene, 
Mary, the mother of James, the younger, the younger and of Joseph and Salome in Galilee. Women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. Jesus is laid in the tomb. It was a preparation day. This is the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Amarathia, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in linen, and placed it in the tomb, cut out of rock. Then he rolled the stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. Hallelujah. We got two more chapters to go. Jesus, this is chapter 16. Jesus rises from the dead. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus of Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go. Tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you in, into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you, trembling and bewildered. The woman went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. When Jesus rode early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. He went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping, when they heard that Jesus was alive and that she seen him, they did not believe it. Jesus appears to two believers traveling on the road. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form of two of, the, of two of them while they were walking in the country. These returned and reported it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Yeah, I'm going to come down. I got one more chapter to go, okay? Okay, give me a kiss. Mm. Okay, I'm almost done. J keep it open? Yeah, you keep it open. Jesus appears to the disciples, including Thomas. Later, Jesus appeared to eleven as they were eating. He rebuked he rebuked them for the lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Jesus gives the great commission. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues and they will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Jesus ascends into heaven. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs and the signs that accompanied it. Oh, and that's it. Hallelujah. I thought it was another chapter. So let's stop at chapter 16. I was there 18. Okay, but that was a good read. I hope that it blessed you all. Um, tomorrow I'm coming on and reading Luke. Let me see how many chapters in Luke. 
I think Luke is a bit longer. 24. Oh, okay, it's 24 chapters in Luke which is still shorter than Matthew. So that'll probably take two hours. So tomorrow I'm coming on early, super early, because my babe, my little baby is back at home. So I got to do it before he wake up. So um, my goal is to do it at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. I'm in Illinois, so yeah. But I hope this blesses you. It's going to be incredible. Happy Easter to you too, Christina. Happy Easter. Um, I'm actually doing a word from the Lord. It's so much revelation in his word on Sunday, which is called um, He Has Died, Now What? And it is a teaching about grace, being saved by grace, and what that looked like. Do we have to work in grace and all that good stuff? So I'll see you guys tomorrow at 5 a.m. Central Standard Time. I hope y'all have a blessed day. It feel like Saturday. It's crazy. It's Thursday. But I hope y'all have a blessed day. Love you.